Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. And welcome to the Foundry. Uh, we're glad that you can be here gathered together with us today. Also, those of you joining us online for our online broadcast, uh, we're grateful for you that you can uh, be here together with us also. Uh, my name is Isaac. Uh, it's good to see you. And we're going to start today uh, with Psalm 30, verses 4 and 5. And uh, this is what David wrote in this psalm. And this is a psalm he wrote to uh, dedicate the temple. So time of celebration and reflection and uh, a time... Um, uh, of just of merrymaking and a, a big thing that had been accomplished. He says, make music to praise the Lord, you faithful people who belong to him. Remember his holiness by giving thanks. 
His anger lasts only a moment. His favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last for the night, but there is a song of joy in the morning. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Lord, we thank you, and we want to lift you up, and we want to praise you. And Lord, shortly we're going to make music and sing song to praise you. Uh, We want to be your faithful people, and we're so glad that we get to belong to you, Lord. We want to lift you up. We want to raise our hands to you. We want to praise you, and we want to give thanks to you uh, because you are the one who created us. You are the creator of the heavens and of the earth, and you are the God who knows us and sees our needs and provides for us. So, Lord, we thank you that your anger lasts only a moment and your favor lasts a lifetime. We ask that you bless us, Lord. Bless us with your favor. Give us hearts that are able to worship you. Give us hearts that are able to love ourselves and love our neighbor and love you, Lord. Give us hands that help us to do all those things so that we can be your chosen, beloved people. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing together. Yahweh, 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 holy is your name, I don't want to take it in vain, Yahweh, 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 holy is your name, I don't want to take it in vain. And there will be no other God before you. There will be no other God before you. There is no one above you, no one beside you, nobody like you. There will be no other God before you. No one, no one, no one. Sing that again, sing Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Holy is your name. I don't want to take it in vain. Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, holy is your name, and I don't want to take it in vain. There will be no other God before you. Oh, there will be no other God before you. There is no one above you. No one beside you, nobody like you. There will be no other God before you. No one, no one, no one. And who else can lead us? And who else can lead us? Lead us to freedom. No one, no one. No one who else can heal all our sins and diseases. No one, no one, no one. Who else can walk, walk on the water? No one, no one, no one. Who else can answer, answer by fire? No one, no one, no one. Who can bring down the tallest of giants? No one, no one, no one. Who else can silence the roar of the lion? No one, no one, no one. And who else is worthy, worthy of worship? No one, no one, no one. Who else is worthy, worthy of worship? There's no one anywhere, not anywhere, no one anywhere, not anywhere, there's nobody like you, no 
nobody like you, no one anywhere, not anywhere, no one anywhere, there's no one anywhere, not anywhere, there's no one anywhere, not anywhere, there's nobody like Nobody like you, no one anywhere, not anywhere. Lover of my soul, the lover of my soul, lover of my soul, lover of my soul, lover of my soul. There's nobody like you, nobody like you, no one anywhere, not anywhere. There will be no other God, and there will be no other God before you. There will be no other God before you. There is no one above you, no one beside you, nobody like you. And there will be no other God before you. No one, no one, no one. There's no one. No one, no one, no one. There's no one, no one, no one. No one, no one, no one. There's no one, no one, no one. Hey, I'm going to invite you, look around, find a neighbor to greet this morning, share a simple thing that brings you joy. Go ahead and greet one another uh, this morning.
I'm going to invite everyone to start making their way back to their seats. And uh, after you make your way back to your seat, if you uh, take a look inside of your bulletin, you'll find uh, a connection card in there. You'll also find an offering envelope in there. So this time, I just want to invite you, if you have any tithes and offerings you wanted to bring this morning, feel free to make use of that envelope, and you can put it in one of the offering boxes in the back. Um, and then also in there is the connection card. And there's lots of spaces on there for you to fill out information on the connection card. Uh, but what we would really love to hear from you is how we can pray for you. Um, because our pastoral staff gets together every week to pray over all those prayer requests. And uh, we would like to hear how it is that we can pray for you this morning. So we would love it if you would take a moment to just open that connection card, fill out that prayer request, whether it's something that you need or something you're struggling with or something to celebrate, uh, whatever it is. Uh, we would like to know how we can pray with you and for you this morning. So we're just going to take a moment to give you time to uh, fill those things out. As you continue to fill out those connection cards, we do have a few announcements that we want to share. Lots of exciting things happening in the summer. And one of the first things that's coming up is our men's outing, which is this Saturday. And it's going to be at Lake Poway. And it will be from 3 to 7-ish, right? Um, it's going to be fun food and fellowship. And just um, come and enjoy, right? And if you want to carpool, we're going to meet here at 2.30. And then whoever's here, we can all just sort out and then leave um, here the church at 3. Um, but if you just want to take a straight shot to Lake Poway, you can go ahead and do that. Those who signed up, I'm going to send out a mass communication later uh, for, with more details. But there's a sign-up sheet in the back, and I will uh, be in the back if you are interested in joining us. And next we have our Father's Day. So the day after, right, we'll continue to celebrate Father's Day because we're that special. Thank you. <laughs> so it's going to be a bilingual service, uh, but afterwards we have food again, and we have games, and we have prizes, and lots of fellowship. So please join us that Sunday, and I know maybe you have some other activities, but it's just a time to come and celebrate fathers. Next we have our Beach Day, which is in July 8th. Again, those details are going to come um, as we get closer. VVS, awesome, right? If you have children, you can start signing them up in your bulletin. There's a QR code, and you can start registering them. If you're a volunteer or you want to volunteer, you can also do that um, through that QR code as well. And then we'll have our VVS Sunday, um, the 23rd. So please save the date if you have the space, and we look forward to having fun with you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Emmanuel. Uh, we're just going to take a minute to look back at that scripture that we started the service with. Um, and again, it says, Make music to praise the Lord, you faithful people who belong to him. Remember his holiness by giving thanks. His anger lasts only a moment. His favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last for the night, but there is a song of joy in the morning. And so look at these things. It says, Make music, belong, giving thanks. As you look at this passage from the Psalms, what phrases stand out to you, um, and why? Maybe you just really like singing, so that music part stands out to you. I don't know. Um, but as you look at this psalm, uh, which ones of those phrases or words stand out to you, um, and why? So anybody who would like to share um, is willing to, or uh, is uh, welcome to share. Yeah, thank you. And yes. Yeah. 
Thank you. Yes. Absolutely. Totally reliable, yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? It is. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, thank you. I see that hand, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else? Don't want to leave anybody out. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yes. He'll weep with us too, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Anybody else? I don't want to leave anyone out. Yeah. Absolutely. Remember that. Thank you. Well, then will you join me again in the word of prayer? Lord, we thank you so much. We thank you that all these troubles and sorrows may last for the night, but you're always there, Lord. There's something that we can find. There's something that we can uh, find that is beautiful, that is wonderful, uh, that you have a divine and perfect purpose for, something that brings joy. So, Lord, help us to be a joyful people um, because it's uh, your joy that is our strength, Lord. Please be with us today as we uh, lift your name up high. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now, for a little bit of fun, I'm going to invite any of the kids who want to come up and sing a song right up here on the stairs to make their way all the way up. So come on down. And if you don't know any other word, if you know the word where, and you can sing it really loud, then you know enough words to come up and sing. So I'm going to invite any of the kids who want to come Go ahead and make your way up to the stairs so that you can come and join us singing in this song. And if you decide halfway through that you'd want to sneak on up and join us, you're more than welcome to sneak on up and join us. It's hard to be one of the first ones, I know. But we're going to sing, I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. 
And every time we say that, kids, you can sing as much as you want. But what you have to do is you have to say, where? Can you say that? Say, where? Can you say, where? Louder. Louder. Where? Oh, good. So we'll say, down in my heart. And you'll say, where? Perfect. You guys think you can do it? All right. I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart, down in my heart, I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy, I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy, I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Let's do that one more time. I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. With joy, joy, one more time. Got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Thank you so much, kids, for su- coming up and participating. That was a lot of fun. I'm going to enjoin everyone. I enjoin. I'm going to invite, not enjoin. I'm not enjoining anyone. Uh, but I'm invite everyone to join us uh, standing and singing some songs of worship and praise together. And uh, this is kind of a grown-up version of that song. Still going to have a little bit of fun. If you want to put your hands together, whatever you want to do, here we go. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart. Words of joy fill my soul like when sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. I have ceased. Here we go. I have ceased from my wandering and going astray. Since Jesus came into my heart. Sins which were many are all washed away since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, words of joy fill my soul like when sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart I'm trading my sorrows I'm trading my shame I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. We sing, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my peace. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. We sing, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I am pressed but not crushed. I am pressed but not crushed. Persecuted, not abandoned. Struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse. For his promise will endure. That is joy's going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes with the morning. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. We sing, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Oh, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Oh, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. God, again, we want to come to you. We want to thank you and praise you. We thank you that you do bring joy and mercy brand new every morning. And, Lord, we want to lift your name up high. We want to praise you. For your great name, the one who was and is and evermore will be the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the author and perfecter of our faith, Lord. It's your name, Jesus, that we want to lift up high today. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord Most High. You hid in glory in creation. Now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us so Jesus you brought heaven down my sin was great your love was greater what could separate us and now what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. 
What a wonderful name it is Nothing compares to this What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus Oh, death could not hold you, the veil torn before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grief. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again and you have no rival you have no equal now and forever God you reign yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the name Above all names, what a powerful name it is! What a powerful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is! Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is! The name of Jesus. What a powerful name! What a powerful name it is! What a powerful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is! With nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is! The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is! The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is! The name of Jesus. Sing, what a beautiful. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. It's the fairest of 10,000. It's the great I am. He's our comforter and our ever-present help. He's God with us. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Word who reigns forever. Let's sing one more time, what a beautiful name. 
What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us a name. Your son's name, that in that name we would find freedom, that in that name we would find redemption, salvation, friendship, acceptance, relationship, restoration, forgiveness, love. There's just so much in that name. That opens up our lives, Father, to receive your blessings. And so we call upon that name in the name of Jesus that today, in this hour, in this time, you open our lives, you tear down walls, you tear down those things that just make it difficult for us to humble ourselves before you and surrender before you. And may we, Father, come before you clean hearts and clean hands Father God and pray that you accept this worship that we bring to you the surrendering that we bring to you I pray that you accept as well the offerings that we bring before you our tithes and that you would continue to provide each and every family here Lord God you are our provider I pray that you would provide bountifully, Lord God, and I just ask, Father, that you continue to shower your blessings of presence in our lives. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may have your seat, and then children, if you want to uh, join the Sunday school downstairs, you're more than welcome to go, or you're welcome to stay here as well, but this would be the time if children want to join the classroom for the children's Sunday school. <clears throat> so for the month of June, we're in June. <laughs> for the month of June, we started this sermon series on the book of Ezra. And the theme of this book is God restores. God restores. And we talked last Sunday how God restores hope. And we're going to look at an incident today where we can see how God restores joy in our lives. But let me ask you first this. What robs joy in your life? Comparison. Comparison. That's a very good one. Yeah. Yes. Fear robs joy. What else robs joy? Sorry. What? Ungratefulness? Yes. Worry. Worry. Good. Disappointment. Disappointment? Yeah. No voice? No voice? Yeah. yeah. Anxiety? Yeah. Getting annoyed. Getting annoyed. Yes. Yes. Pain? Bitterness? Bitterness. Distraction? Frustration? Loneliness? Ooh, done. Yeah. Depression? Yes. Hate. Hate. Such a big one. Silence? Tiredness. Tiredness. Fatigue, yes. Mild? Mild? Mm. Okay. Hmm. Expectations. Unrealistic expectations, right? <laughs> so we want you to be this, this, and that. Ah, okay, let's. What else? My picture in my head of how life was supposed to be. 
Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, it's interesting that we put words to that, right? But it's also more interesting that, oh, yeah, I've had that one rob my jaw. Oh, yeah, I've had that rob my jaw. Oh, yeah, I have that one. So we all somehow come together and share the same experiences of the things that what? That rob our joy. Now, let's think logically, right? So you live in a house and you live with, and you live with a thief, right? And food continues to disappear all the time. I'm talking about your kids, okay? <laughs> Uh, talking about an actual thief. Uh, food, food just keeps disappearing from your fridge, right? And it robs your joy, right? When I don't have food, it robs my joy. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it robs your joy, and then you think, oh, no, in order to fix this joy of mine, right, I need to do what? Restock my fridge, right? So we, what do we do? We just go out and bring more food and restock our fridge, and then, oh, man, gone again, and your joy goes away, right? Logically, we would try and find who is robbing what? That food, right? And we would think the best thing to do is to what? Get rid of that thief, right? So when we think about the things that rob our joy, we need to start thinking, well, if those things try to rob my joy, should I welcome them in my life? No right? What should we do then? And just like you were brought to awareness of the things that do rob joy, like comparison, and I, comparison, like if you, I, I'm, if you look at social media, right, it's so easy for our mind to drift into what? Comparison, right? You scroll down, and then what do you see? Oh, wow, okay, he's got this, she's got this, she's doing this, he's doing that, she looks this, she looks that, and what do we start doing all of a sudden? right? And then we start losing joy. So there are ways that you can restore that joy, and it takes part of our effort to do that as well. The way God restores joy is not a mystery. It's very simple. It's very simple. And Ezra is going to teach us that today. When I ask my son, Caleb, right, when he's not happy, because of something, or let's say he got in a fight with his brother or something. And I love this age because they're so innocent and they don't ask for much, right? And when they're not happy, I ask Caleb, well, Caleb, I see that you're not happy, so what can I do to make you happy? And guess what he says? He says, well, can I get a hug? And so then I give him a hug, right? If you ask an adult, like, why are you not happy? Well, because I don't have a Corvette. Well, how can I make you happy? Well, give me a Corvette. No, I can't do that, right? <laughs> So it's different, right? But for them, it's just that sense of being what? Sense of being loved, right? Like, oh, you're here. Oh, it's, so, it's going to be okay. You love me, right? In Ezra chapter 3, there's an important lesson about claiming that joy that God wants to restore in us because he understands there are a lot of things in life that can rob our joy. The first wave of people that left um, that Persian Empire, that ba the old Babylonian territory, right? And they journeyed for over four months into the new territory, into their new, back home, into their land. They've kind of already settled. And one of the first things they begin to rebuild is their identity as a people. They come together as one, it says, to build that which was central to their identity. And that is their temple. In essence, their worship to God. And this is what Ezra chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 says. It says, When the seventh month came and the Israelites were in their town, the people gathered together as one, as one, in Jerusalem. Then Joshua, Josedach's son, along with his fellow priests, and Zerubbabel, um, Shealtiel's son, along with his kin, started to rebuild the altar of Israel's God so that they might offer entirely burnt offerings upon it as prescribed in the instruction from Moses, the man of God. One of the central parts of their, of their identity and who they are was their worship to who? Their worship to God. And one of the ways that it facilitated that during that time, right, was the, the sacrificial system that God had established through Moses. So for them, it was very important to go back to that, to go and restore that. 
And then one of the first festivals that they celebrated was the Festival of Booths. In Ezra chapter 3, verse 4, it says they celebrated the Festival of Booths as prescribed. Every day they presented the number of entirely burnt offerings required by ordinance for that day. A very fitting festival. It's a festival that we also know as the Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot, right? And it's a festival when Israelites will live in huts for eight days. And you say, well, why? Because it's a remembrance of their time in their wilderness when they left Egypt, right? And they had to wander around the wilderness for almost 40 years, right? They lived in what? They lived in tents. They lived in huts. So then coming into the promised land and seeing how God delivered them and protected them in their journey, celebrating that festival is a celebration of God's provision, God's faithfulness, God's protection during that time. And now once again, seeing that they are free, right, from this other empire that had captivated, that had taken them capture, that, man, yes, that had captured them. Um, now they find themselves celebrating again the freedom that God has brought into their lives. God's faithfulness and provision is fresh in their minds and hearts. To some, maybe even surreal, right? Like, wow, can't believe it. We're home? We're celebrating again? And they continue the, the restoration of the, found, of the temple with even more celebration, and they begin to rebuild, it says, now the foundation of the temple as well. So in Ezra chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, this is what it reads. It says, When the builders laid the foundation of the Lord's temple, the priests clothed in their vest and carrying their trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals, arose to praise the Lord according to the directions of Israel's King David. They praised and gave thanks to the Lord, singing responsively, He is good. His graciousness for Israel lasts forever. They were saying, He is good. His graciousness for Israel lasts forever. It's people that found themselves plucked from their home, not knowing who they are, find themselves home, and they rejoice because their identity is regained. Their worship is regained. This is God restoring joy in his people. The Israelites are worshiping the God who is good, whose graciousness lasts forever. When we worship God, we are exalting who God says he is. And who God is, is worthy of praise, glory, and honor, right? If we declare God is good and faithful, God's goodness and faithfulness is worthy of praise and honor and glory. If we declare God is gracious and merciful, then God's graciousness and mercifulness is worthy of praise, honor, and glory. If we declare God is loving and compassionate, that love and compassion is worthy of praise and honor and glory. Now, this is the part where joy comes in. When we come to worship that God and our hearts place trust in that God, our hearts begin to fill with joy. Our hearts begin to fill with joy. We are declaring, in other words, with our hearts that God's goodness and faithfulness is trustworthy for me. It's one thing for me to declare that, yes, God is faithful, God is trustworthy, but when I come and I say, yes, I trust that faithfulness, I trust that goodness of God, when I willfully put that trust in who God declares who He is, that's where joy starts being restored in my heart. We are declaring with our hearts that God's grace and mercy is trustworthy. We are declaring with our hearts that God's love and compassion is trustworthy. Joy, in other words, is an emotion that is a product of trust. Joy is an emotion that is a product of trust and not necessarily a product of happy circumstances. And that's very different, right? Because you have to see later on in the story, while they are joyful in worshiping and celebrating who God is, right? The good and faithful God. At the same time, there's other things happening. And it's interesting why this is in this book. 
In Ezra chapter 3, verse 12 through 13, later on, it says, All the people shouted with praise to the Lord because the foundation of the Lord's house had been laid. But many of the older priests and Levites and heads of families who had seen the first house wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this house, although many others shouted loudly with joy. No one could distinguish the sound of the joyful shout from the sound of the people's weeping, because the people rejoiced very loudly. The sound was heard at a great distance. It's interesting why those two things are in the story, right? God doesn't condemn grieving. God is not pointing finger at those people saying, hey, you know, you shouldn't be sad. Yes, I understand the sadness, right? I mean, they, they witnessed and they knew about the previous temple, and it's okay to grieve, but you have to understand there were also those who wanted to do what? Who wanted to take joy and rejoice. They could have easily shifted to what? To the weeping, right? Oh, why are you crying? Oh, you're crying because of this? Oh, man. And then what happens to your joy? It gets robbed, right? But they kept on singing and praising because their trust was not in what people were seeing. Their trust was in who? In the God who just gave them this opportunity to bring back worship and to lay the foundation and to build a temple again. This is God who is faithful. This is God who is good. Let us celebrate that. And they are placing their trust in God. Joy is an emotion that is a product of that trust in God and not necessarily a product of happy circumstances, because we're not always going to have happy circumstances in our lives. We're not, right? Even you today, for the brief moment where we had this wonderful worship and singing before God, I know all of you, when you woke up this morning, there was something that robbed your joy. There might be even something right now that you're thinking, right? But for that brief moment, what did you do? You forgot all about that. And you were joyful. Why? Because in that moment, you were not only declaring, but you wanted to also what? Trust. Yes, God is good. Yes, there is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, the name of Jesus is wonderful. So this restoration of joy that God wants for us in our lives is not a mystery. It's very simple. God invites us to do what? To trust in who he is again. Every day. Every day. It is not a mystery when we don't seek God day after day, morning after morning, and we realize, why are we not joyful anymore? Because we are forgetting to put our trust in who? In God. And many other things come into our lives and say, well, you know what? You don't always need God. You can put your trust in this and that and the other. But only God can restore that. We'll have circumstances that distract us from that joy. I can maintain that posture of trust in who God is in various circumstances. Hence, I can find joy in various circumstances. In moments where it's difficult, in moments where it's annoying, in moments where you're stressed, right? In moments where you're going through a hard time, you can still maintain joy. Because again, the foundation of that joy is when you do what? When you trust. So that's why it makes sense when James says something like this. In James chapter 1, verse 2 and 4, it says, My brothers and sisters... Think of the various tests you encounter as occasions for joy. I was like, wait a second, right? When my kids are not listening and they just want to make me pluck my hair, right? It's like, no, I do not want to count that occasion as joy. But remember, it's not about those circumstances, right? Because then it goes on to say, after all, you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, And let this endurance complete its work so that you may be fully mature, complete, and lacking in nothing. You see, their testing was a lot more different than just kids not listening. Their testing was, hey, our lives are in danger because we're following this Jesus. And that can rob joy (laughs) very easily when you're being persecuted, right? Right? But then they say, well, count it as a joy. Why? In other words, count it as a joy because you can trust this God 
who is able to protect you, who is able to lead you, who is able uh, to get you through this, who is able to provide for you, right? That joy that James is talking about is not from the trials we face, but the trust that God will get them through. The trust that we will have acquired or learned something from those trials. The trust that God will have our back through it all. The trust that God remains in control. The trust that God has the last say in it. The trust that God will not abandon us. The trust that God is faithful. The trust that God is good. My joy is a product of that trust. Not the circumstances that surround me or the trials that surround me. So I can declare I have a God who is trustworthy. And whenever I seek that God and whenever I seek those things that remind me of that God who is trustworthy, whether it's, whether it's you turn on the music, whether it's you turn on Caleb, whether it's you open your Bible, whether it's you meet with someone to pray, right? Whatever it is that reminds you that God is trustworthy, what happens in our heart is joy is restored. Joy is restored when I worship that God. I pray that we are able to declare with the psalmist. And I love this psalm in Psalm 28, verse 7. It says this, and you may know it by heart. It says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart, what does it do? Trust in Him. Trust in Him. Not myself. Not others, just in Him. I was helped, and now my heart is what? Rejoiced. And I thank Him with my song. I pray that the God who is trustworthy may restore your joy every day as you seek to trust Him more, as you open your heart and your life to trust Him more. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You that you're a trustworthy God. You're a God who never fails. You're a God who came to bring salvation into this world, who died on that cross, and you did not fail. You're a God whom we claim and we ask for help, Lord God, and you did not fail. Yes, sometimes the process may feel painful, and the trials may feel long and stretched. But Father, restore joy in us today. Not by fixing our eyes on the things that surround us, but fixing our eyes on you who is trustworthy. You, we, you are trustworthy, Father, even in our, in our depression. You are trustworthy even in our addictions. You are trustworthy even in our financial difficulties. You are trustworthy even in our broken relationships. You are trustworthy in our marriages. You are trustworthy, Father, with our kids and the future of our children. You are trustworthy in the, just the challenges that we face every day. You are trustworthy. And I pray that we may find joy in that daily. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing a song together. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. We sing, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, yes, Lord, amen. Amen, amen. As we are dismissed, let me pray this blessing over you. Heavenly Father, we, your people, 
want to trust in you, in your goodness, in your faithfulness, in your compassion, in your grace, in your love. And whatever we have to face this week, Lord, I pray that you move our hearts to trust you even deeper and stronger. And may you restore joy in our hearts, in our families, in our children, Lord God. And we just pray, Lord God, that we would continue to praise you, even in the middle of the storm, as the song goes, Lord God, that we will continue to say, we trust you, God. We trust you. So fill us with that trust. Give us that trust. Give us that faith. Bless us with faith this week. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed. I hope to see you next week.